There you are. All right. All right. We're here. We're live. We're taking people's questions eventually. So, you know, hopefully you're not trapped on I-70, slowly dying, waiting to be saved because it's buried under 40 inches. Anyway, TC and I went and smashed POW today. Uh, you know, but yeah, so we got, if you got questions, get them in the chat box, wherever they are. We're giving spins of the wheel to Super Chats eventually at some point. Um, let's see what else. Hopefully you guys caught yesterday's top five. TC's top five tips for doing a bank slalom. Yep. It was a it good one. Season. Yeah, it is the season. We got slash, and, slash and burn next week. Saturday. Slash and burn, bucket banked. Uh, burnt, burnt, Birmingham man is coming up. Uh, rally for rocker. Uh, bomb hole cup. Um, yep. There's a fucking Pretty much week after. Coming. There's there's a lot of traveling going on in the industry right now for those. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, anyways, all right. Well, we'll start off with the first super chat of the day from our boy Letters Smash Pow. R.I.P. Rest in peace, Tragon's Freaker. One of our boys blew his freaker up. So let's give him a spin. But if you guys are good. We'll talk about this in a little bit. The battalion boots. So, yep. Oh, you lose. That's rough. Starting off the day. All Close. right. Yeah. So we got S. Scott, 1986. RIP I-70. RIP Denver covered in snow. <laughs> Time to own a trailer in the mountains and become a trailer park boy. Always wanted to be Ricky Trevor Corey Smokes. No, it's TC Averin. Smokes. Smokes. Don't so, huh? Dude, I don't know what it was this week with it being spring break, but the amount of people riding around with cigarettes in their mouths at Copper was insane. Lift line, cigarettes hanging out. Cat tracks, cigarettes hanging out. And they weren't like the small ones. They were smoking like the hundreds. I like that. And I was like, Jesus Christ, two in a row? <laughs> Fuck. This thing hates you. All right. We got uh, Yim looking good, boys. I don't know if we look good. We probably look really tired. We smashed yeah, I like the pretty, I like the pretty gas from that. Oh, you get a question mark. I don't know what that is today. I don't care. <laughs> All right. This is a good, good question from now. Yim for you. Fellas, I have dreams about a twin alchemist with a three-fourths setback. Should I get an antidote or something else while the sales are on? You just I would wrote probably, this week. Yeah, I would go antidote if you I want something speak. more twin than that. Like, yeah, hundred percent. They say they feel really similar in stiffness, especially in the nose. Like on the new ones, that both have that three D shaping in the nose. They feel very similar. Like, but yeah, if you want a super aggressive board like that, I would probably go with the antidote if you want to be able to ride switch a little easier. Just because with all that tail or all that nose on the. Uh, Alchemist, if you were to ride it switch or when you ride it switch, it does feel a little weird, just like especially popping switch on it. Like the load up is more, but it does have a good spring to it. But yeah, I go antidote if you want something a little bit more twin. Like it's a directional twin, so you'll be fine. Yeah. You could actually set yourself twin up on that if you wanted to with your You switch. could. Yeah. Oh, so all right. So we got D Lock 79, 6'1, 235 pounds, size 14 boots, looking for an all around twin, looking at the 2024 Kappa DOA or 2023 Burton Process Flying V. Both of them. Fuck that thing. Fuck that <laughs> boy. Fuck Flying V. Fuck that thing. You don't want that. Uh, 159 wide, rider level intermediate. Cheers in advance. You guys are legends. Well, as, as you can tell, fuck the Process Flying V. So I think that yeah. pretty much leaves you with that DOA. Yep. So, yeah. yeah, I would say DOA for sure. Like, you're probably not going to like that flying V at all just because of how loose it's going to be. Like, it's not yeah. going to be fun. Yeah. All right. And our moderator, Jack Off Beat, wants everyone to know, don't forget to smash the like button or you're a hard-booting monoskier. <laughs> all right. Ole Venom. Shadow Band is a smooth, true all mountain board. If so, which size for me at 195 pounds, 6'2, size 10 boots, 57, 61, 60 wide, or other boards? I mean, I assume by smooth you mean damp 
which at that point I'm almost like you should go to the algorithm. <laughs> it's a little more damn. Yeah, if you're 195, 62, I would go to the algorithm. In a 60 wide with the size tens. Super stability. Yeah, you could. I mean, 61 wouldn't kill you either. Honestly, all three of those sizes you could do. If you're more freestyle yeah. focused, I'd go with the 57 because you're going to get a better swing weight. Uh, yeah, if you're riding it all mountain, they'll go 61. Like depending on which, how aggressive your terrain is that you're riding, I would probably go bigger. If it's more mellow Midwest style, yeah, go 57. Like I think he's in Sweden or Switzerland. I would probably go 61 then. Yeah. All right. Okay. So we got Rich Foster. Is spring break crazy busy at Copper? Honestly, no. Like we, Monday, we was, one day. Monday was busy. Yeah. Tuesday was more dead. I didn't ride yesterday. Today was a pow day, but I-70 was closed. Like the spring break crowd does not make it to the mountain until like 10, 30, 11. Like we were smashing. I mean, we were smashing on tracked pow and Union Meadows at 12, 30. Yeah. So. Yeah, they come out for those fair weather days, but if it's like this, like snowy and stuff, they're going to take their sweet time, maybe not even make it out. And then when they do make it out, I heard a bunch of them talking in the lift line today that were like, yeah, we're uh, we're just hitting low angle pow today. You know, it's awesome. And I'm like, oh, OK, cool. They're not going anywhere near us. Low angle pow. They weren't <laughs> leaving groomers. No, no, they were they, not they weren't even going in the trees at the low angle where it's actually fun. They were literally riding fucking groomers so yeah no, like it hasn't it hasn't been a bad um spring break per se like talking with people that work in lodging i guess our visit so this week so it was the 8th to the 16th or 9th to the 16th was supposed to be the busiest week for summit county we're still down like 33 percent for visitation like you can see it i mean i went um what was it yesterday was it yesterday no it wasn't yesterday tuesday i went to go grab a sandwich from castaways and other than there was a bunch of snow carnies at the bar who shouldn't have been sitting there that long it was fucking dead and like that place is usually an overflow and like walking past everything on main i was like look, peek my head in and i'm like there's tables like it's not that busy Dude, when I went to Steamboat, it was busier than it was down here. Like, Steamboat's up busier this year. Like, every time I've gone, I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? And they like, got yeah, so much like... snow last year. Well, yeah. And that, and like, they still have more snow this year, too, where people are like, ah, we'll go there. Like, but like, so many more people there compared to here, where it's like just Jerry dodging left and right. Like, people not looking, cutting across runs, that sort of shit. And you're like, okay, yeah. you're like, this is ridiculous. So here's one. So I took Baroness out for a walk before this, and I stopped by the market at the post office, and I was talking to the deli boys, and they're like, look at 4 o'clock. So I look back. There had to be 300 people on fucking 4 o'clock. It was just like <laughs> little ants moving around, and you literally look over at, like, Park Lane and Freeway, dead. You look over at peak um, 9, fucking empty. Peak 10, empty. And I'm like, they're all on 4 o'clock. And it's the same thing at Copper. Everyone was like we're going to go get on American flyer. And I was like, I guess we're going to go take American Eagle since there's only five people in the lift line. And then we'll take yeah. accelerator and we'll go out you uh, lower in Janet and cut over to Timberline and stuff. And it's like, they literally congregate on one fucking run <laughs> and one share. Yeah. The amount of people when we were cutting back to the car to swap boards that were on the cat track screaming, where is Eagle? I can't find American Eagle. And I'm like, just stay on the fucking cat track. You're about a half mile from where you need to be. You'll be fine. Yeah. So, you know, it was, uh, yes, yeah, so the spring break actually hasn't been too bad. Oh. Oh, Rich, got yourself a small sticker pack. Make sure you email us info at angrysnowboarder.com and TC will get that in the mail. Did I give you last week's winners yet? I think so. Okay, cool. I wasn't sure. I think. 
I'll check my email when we're done. All right. Okay. We got this one from Your Guitar One. I own two boards, one rocker and one hybrid. Thinking of getting the Mercury as a camber board. Worth it? And is it a good board for steeps and tree runs? Yeah. I mean, it's not full camber. You got to understand. Yeah. It's, it's basically hybrid with rocker in the tip and shit like that. But yeah. Ugh. Yeah, I think it's a solid board. Like it, it's pretty much a board that will do anything for you. Yeah. Does it do everything great? No, but it will do everything just fine. So yeah. like, I mean, that was my daily drive around two of them. Like still a solid board. I think you're testing that one this year. Or am I? No, you are. I am. I am? No. Uh, no, no, you've got the you've got the the Mercury. I've got the Mega Merc. No, I don't have a Mercury. I got a Midwest. They didn't send us a regular. Just the Mega. Oh, yeah. No, I didn't ask for that because nothing changed and we've both ridden it. Yep. So, mm -hmm. okay. That's fine. It's all a board, though. You're good. There's so many boards sitting between his office and my house. <laughs> like, we have no clue what's going on. I had to start putting them underneath the bed because there's no more wall space for them. I have a box full of ride bindings and boots at the end of my bed. I kicked the box last night and was like, the fuck is that cardboard feeling? And then I was like, oh, there's boots and shit at the end of my bed. Like, just boxes of it. Fucking ridiculous. Yes. So. I, uh... <laughs> yeah, I... I kicked those right before we hopped on when you're like, where are you? I was like, just rubbing my toes. Cause I just booted all those boards under my bed when I was grabbing water. I was oh. like, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> I'm gonna take my sock off and be missing some skin on my middle toe. <laughs> oh God. It's freaking awful. I mean, I chopped my finger today, loading two boards in the back of the car this morning. Yeah, you did. I was like, pull up to TC's and I was like, I'm bleeding and I'm putting a bandaid on. Yep. Oh my God. Ugh. All right. Everyone wants the answer to this question. Rich Foster, what will you replace the shadow ban with? The shadow ban will be dead by the end of the season. And I'm pretty sure I'm just going to give it away closing day. Like I'm probably just going to leave it in a rack and be like free to a good home. I don't care. So somebody, somebody's going to end up with it. And it's going to be hilarious when I see that in the lift line. Be like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I want. I've been thinking about well, it. There's a shadow ban under the, there's there is a brand, the there's bed. a brand new shadow ban at TC's. If I if I want to go that route, I could, I yeah. could. It's got a sick graphic this year too. Yeah, it does. More skulls, just like the one I have. Which <laughs> part, of, part of me is like, I don't really want to get rid of this one because I like the space skull graphic, but I'm also yeah. like, I'm never gonna fucking ride it again. That's just shit in my way. Like somebody else can ride that and get another season out of it and clap it beyond mm -hmm. to death, and I'd be stoked for them um i don't know well we were talking about that earlier i was like well there is that resort twin in the capita stack and that's a yep. 56 and i'm like oh it's not bad but then i'm also like you know do i pick up like the new freaker from rome because i like that or do i just be like fuck everyone and i get the new warden from rome and everyone yeah. be like you're literally riding a mid-level board but the new one from rosinal was really cool because they're doing directional rocker in their board directional cam rock so it's 30 percent rocker in the nose and then it's camber and then it's like a 20 or 15 or whatever it is in the tail and it's really weird it's cool it rides super good i was like oh, i could do that that board is that board fucks you know i don't know like there's some stuff from arbor i was looking at i don't know i could ride that you know like solomon pick up like a taka in a 58 and just be like, there you go. That's what I'm riding. HPS yeah. talk, you know, like, I don't Dude, know. Everybody that gets on that board loves that thing. When I was up with P tools this past week, they were like, this board's awesome actually. And he's like, yeah, this is my daily driver. And like the top. Yeah, well, that's the thing. That's the thing. Like riding the Taka and the Taka EP back to back. There's for the average consumer. I don't think that they're going to find too much difference. The EP is softer and it's designed to be ridden bigger but the regular taka is like it just rides like a really good directional twin like i could just ride yeah. this thing everywhere i don't Did know maybe i'll screw, maybe i'll screw with everyone and order a custom made gilson just so i can purposely talk shit on it every review a whole season of me just talking shit on how bad this board is 
So, yeah, I was riding the new Rome Katana bindings. Bindings are great. Board's a fucking hunk of shit. <laughs> like, I am that petty. I could do, I would do that. You would hate your year. Oh, I'd fucking hate it. Oh, the first thing I would do, I'd take it right over to one of the shops. Actually, I'd probably just take like a Dremel and file that thing, just turn it into a 3BT by hand <laughs> and be like, there we go. Now I can actually stone grind it. Yeah. Be fucking hilarious. So to answer your question, Rich, I don't know. I'll cross that bridge when I come to it, you know, like at some point. I mean, I, I was thinking about it the other day when I rode the Super DOA. I was like, I could ride this every day. I could do this. I could totally be a Super DOA guy. Yeah. Be fun. Super DOAs are fun. They like, are. That's, a, that's why I took one from the shop. Like, Bernie just BFI. They like, yeah, you you rode the piss out of that thing. That's yours now. It's like, all right, sweet. Like, that's a really fun board to have. And it's a sneaky pow board, too, if you set it back. Because that nose that's, and tailor socket just, like, just, go to a, I could just go to a Mega Merc. And you I could do that, and I'd be like, I'd, I'd be happy with that. There's so many boards that just make me happy. Like, it's so funny having done this for so long, doing reviews. People are like, "You're not as mean as you used to be," and I was like, "Because companies started making better product. Like, I don't need to shit on stuff as much. So when I yeah. do shit on it, it's because it's that bad. But the good stuff, like, there's just so many companies making so many good things. Like, I rode that uh, new LibTech Rad Ripper Mayhem. It's camber. Yeah. It's a camber twin that's wide with a regular side cut, no magnet traction. That board fucks hard. <laughs> like, I mean, dude, I didn't want to get off that. I was like, oh, I could do that. That thing would be, you know, part of me is like, fuck it. I'll just get a passport. Yeah. You know, I'm like, no, oh, so yeah, whatever. All right, we got a super chat here from Charles. Drove to Netherland from the south of Denver just to find out there was an Avi that is blocking the road to Eldora. Eldora was close. Fuck my life. Oh, dude, nobody in Denver is getting to a mountain today. No, they're not going anywhere. No. Like... The best thing you could do would be drive all the way down to Colorado Springs, cut all the way over, drive up and go to Monarch. Yeah. Is 285 open? 285 is open, but Hoosier Pass was closed for like two hours or three hours. Oh, yeah. And there's so many idiots driving that pass. They keep having head-on collisions like every other day. Yeah, I, I have noticed that quite a bit. Yeah. It's okay. doesn't matter. If you were trying to get through Hoosier Pass and come through Breck, you might have to deal with Breck PD. Yesterday, someone split a manhole cover in half. And it flew out and someone drove their car into the where the manhole cover was and blew their tire out. So the cops pull up and they're looking at the broken manhole cover in the right lane, directing people into the left lane to the wide open manhole. So cars are just bottoming out in it. And I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. And the guy's like, I'm a cop. And I was like, clearly you're not intelligent. Like my tax dollars pay for you to be a fucking retard. I was like, and, and, and I was like here's what you do. You pull the broken manhole cover out of the right, you close the left lane down, and you drive people around it until you put a new one in. Oh. Uh, Monarch was closed today. Oh, really? Yeah, someone just messaged that. Oh. What did they A lot of closures just... today. What's up? A lot of closures today. A lot of resorts. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, surprised Copper had as much open as they did. Yeah. Well, I'm surprised that they opened stuff later in the day. I thought it was just going to be closed all day until they could bomb it, like, pretty much throughout the day. But, yeah, Lower Enchanted, I'm surprised that was open. I mean, God, they were blasting that at, like, 1045 in the morning. That's late. Like, next to us when we were standing there. Oh, that was fucking hilarious. It's like, it's closed. Boom! Okay, it's Even closed. Even Lauren felt that. Even Lauren felt She was like, what the hell was that? Yeah, I know. You, you got you guys that don't know Lauren is our deaf friend, and she like was like, hmm, I I felt that one. Like, yeah, yeah, that was close. <laughs> yeah, no, it was a, uh, yeah, it was an inter it was an interesting day, that's for sure. Like we went, we went over to the far uh, east side of the mountain, and it was so wind loaded and crusty. It was like big snow drift, crust, big snow drift, crust. It was so yeah. bad. Like I was, oh dude, trail. drain pipe. <laughs> Yeah, Drain well, I, looked that, so cool. I was riding that new Stranda Shorty 64 wide, 
just crust busting everything because that board's really good at it. And I was still struggling. I was like, God damn. I just surfed all those wind lips with the uh, MCE. And it was literally like, oh, that I can tell it's crusty underneath. That it's just like ripped the lip on it. And you're like, oh, it's so much fun. That board was so good today, dude. Like, it was more stable than I expected it, for sure. It's weird because if you're on a groomer, you see the nose of the MC Wayfinder gets super fucking floppy. And then if you like get in like those powder moguls we did by the side of the race course, it just climbs right on top of them. And you're just like yeah. pillow lining it. And you're like, that's yeah. weird. Yeah. And even in Chunder and stuff, like you don't feel it bopping up and down or anything. It just pushes it over like because of like that setback on it, I think. But like, yeah, in any sort of fresh snow, I didn't feel any any nose flop but then the second we found like the groomers at the end it was like wah, 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 wah. and you're like okay dude like i get it now yeah definitely yeah, keeping on the fresh well and then i showed you when we were swapping boards is like because kobe was like is that like c2 and you're like yeah and i was like no look at it it's like a rocker into an elongated c2 camber in the front deep aggressive reverse and then a really tight camber under the rear foot and i was like it's very weird and they don't market it that way they don't talk about it's it. super weird we're yeah i can't even like show you guys right now but bit in between the feet it's like just the longest rocker section ever that it's not like super aggressive or anything but you're like yeah well, it's, like, so, so it's like nose rocker long camber long rocker short tight camber under the rear mm -hmm. foot and you're like what the fuck and I remember the first time I rode that, and I was like, this is super fucking weird. And um, I had some guy arguing with me. He's like, that board just rips for carving. And I was like, that board needs fresh snow to survive. I mean, it was fine it's, on the It's smooth. okay. It was fine. It wasn't You're not like... going to die, but would I be like, would that be my first choice from them if I wanted to go rip a turn? No, it wouldn't even be in my top 20. No, I would say it's it's a surf carver. Yes. Where you kind of, you throw your hips forward, you throw the rest of your body weight back, and you just kind of use your hips to turn it. But you're not going to be going super aggressive or anything like that on it. Like, you're just yeah. kind of just taking it as she goes, really. Like, a long board on surfing, really. Like, <laughs> Well, that it, it, to that extent, it kind of reminds me of riding, like, the Taka EP. Yeah. Because that board's mm -hmm. just got so much flap in the nose, and it, it's designed for those long turns, too. Well, let's give yeah. Charles a spin here. Oh, where are we going? Oh, oh, is it going to bounce? Oh, so close. This isn't blank. All right. We got Coach Rich. What would your setup be if you were to do natural selection? Hmm. Uh, well, obviously... My ride fuse boots, Jones Mercury bindings. Yep. My my KT boots, my Rome Black yeah. label bindings. So uh, so we got three, four, we got we got two thirds of our setup taken care of. It depends. So if it's at Revelstoke like it was yesterday, I'd probably go Mastratos. But if it's like Jackson Hole or something like that, like where they have the previous years i would either go possibly like an aeronaut or like a mega merc something like that where it's going to be a little bit softer in the nose but the aeronaut i would do just for speed and just straight up plowing through shit so that's kind of where i would go it depends on the course though like what do you got though for yesterday i haven't even watched because the oh. Red Bull app is such shit. When I tried to rewatch it, I was like, God, this app sucks ass. Um, <laughs> just put the damn thing on fucking YouTube and make us all happy. Um, you know, so, well, the course here, just for the, your reference, east side of the course, alpine terrain, big cliffs, west side of the course, they put in like that's where they did all the handmade like pillow lines and more freestyle oriented. I might do a mega death. Okay. Yeah. I can see that. I think that would be like kind of my go-to. Like, I think that's kind of like, I don't know. It's weird. There's part of me that's like, just take the Endeavor archetype because it'll blow everyone's mind if you ride switch with a swallowtail. So if you like pop a 180 pow butter in that swallow, 
and then you pop back off of something, everyone's going to lose their fucking mind because they'll be like, she did it on a fucking swallowtail. And it's like, that board rides like a twin tip if you know what the fuck you're doing. So, yeah. You know, like that one. I don't know. I'll just take my K2 Cool Bean. I don't even care. Yeah. I mean, it spins really fast. <laughs> it's it's a 144. Like, I got nothing to yeah. worry about. And it's like this freaking wide. I'm just going to put a bomb hole in the ground and ride out. As long as you just land on your back foot, it'll sink enough where you'll be fine, I yeah. think. Like, but yeah, I don't know. Something. Honestly, though, yeah. like there, there's some really good boards. Like maybe like the 160, because it only comes in a 160, the Amplid Morning Glory. Because that thing's wide and it, that board's solid. But there's also part of me that's like, just get a beta APX from Nidecker. Because then you got a little bit yeah. of tail to work with, you know, or even go with the Alpha APX. Like it, it would yeah. be fine, you know, a little stiffer and stuff like that. So, but I definitely think something directional, like slightly directional to like directional twin would be the way to go. Like I'm not going yeah. full directional on it unless I'm trying to just go for like, the cliffs technical area but if i want to do any freestyle on it i'm not trying to spin a super directional board like a yeah, hovercraft I mean, or something like up to five millimeters of taper it'll probably be oh fine. that's fine yeah that's fine i was thinking anything under 10 is oh, what yeah. i would probably yeah. 10 and below none of that 20 like, mils of taper or no, like i don't need that much <laughs> no all right Let's take this one from our boy. My knees are cheese. Looking good, boys. Most epic top five TC. Fill us in on the spring break havoc and snowpocalypse. How many spring breakers are stuck in Denver crying because they can't get up 70? Will that affect the amount of herpes uphill? No, the herpes is here. It goes downhill. Like you come without downhill. herpes and you leave with it. Like the herpes just lives here. But uh, I don't know. Someone posted in our Discord, like some dude that's like, you guys... Fucking close the road when there's too much snow and you won't open the resort. And then even when it's good, you don't open all the good terrain because you're saying that it's like doesn't have good coverage. Fuck this place. I'm never coming here. And the whole thing I could think of was good. You're the kind of asshole that drives through the center of the roundabout and dukes of hazards into our bus stop. <laughs> well, they're the kind that would have to call Abbey Patrol because it's too deep in the trees and they're stuck. Like That's the guy that I find in a creek bed. Like yep. at the basin, and he's like, "Can you help me?" And I'm like, "No, yeah, you'll be fine." What do you mean, no, off. not my job, dude. I like, you're a fucking idiot. You can yeah. clearly see it's a creek bed, you know. It's like I don't know. I did see a good one on uh, Tuesday at the basin. Guy hit the middle jump in Peace Park, the one that you can never get speed for because it's built wrong. And oh, okay. I was coming up. Yeah, you know which one I'm talking about. Yeah the knuckle jump because like yeah. people just explode on it guy goes up turns 90 degrees like this starfish's stiff leg realizes he's about to hit digs his toes in. he didn't even hit the knuckle he hit the deck oh. and he goes forward like this superman's misses the knuckle slams both of his wrists into the landing oh. and he's just sitting there and he gets up and everyone from the chair is like you okay and he's holding his wrist. He's like, yeah, I'm fine. I was like, you broke your fucking wrist. And he's like, no, I didn't. And I was like, make a fist. And he tries to make a fist and he starts screaming. I was like, your wrist is broken. I was like, guaranteed, uh, guaranteed. You just broke your radius and ulna. I was like, guaranteed. Like, and I mean, honestly, if he hadn't a starfished, he probably would have made it to the knuckle and just bounced and been fine. Yeah. Like, so there's that. My favorite was the guy from Kansas that threatened threatened me in the roundabout. <laughs> Did I tell you about this? I'm like walking from the Beeler lot through the the roundabout there, and I'm on the inside, and I know that the cars are going to go around, and then I'll step off, and there's like nine cars. So I stop, and I'm just waiting on the inside, and then I look over, and this guy is just at a dead stop, and I was like, hey, man. He's like, you can go, and I was like, you have the right of way. Go. There's nine cars behind you. No, fuck you. You can go. Fuck me. Fuck you. So we're screaming it back and forth at each other. And he's like, what are you going to do about it? I was like, step out of the car. Let's fucking finish it like men. I have kids. I'm going to beat your ass in front of your kids then. I don't care. <laughs> and like the best is this little like Chinese woman. She's like, can you just fucking move? He's telling you exactly what you need to hear. Get through the roundabout. He'll step off and he'll be where he was. If you hadn't stopped, 
none of us would be waiting. And I was like, that's how roundabouts work. You know, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So it's, I don't know. It's, there's that. Um, I watched a guy with a Texas truck yesterday stop in the middle of French Street for no apparent reason, no lights on. It's fucking dark. And he just stops, sits there for a minute, then just hammers the gas and just until it hit pavement and then it like caught and he shot through the stop sign. And I was like, that's impressive. You know, seeing that a lot of dually trucks that do not fit in any parking spot. Yep. They're just like, they're just sticking out in the middle of the road. They're like, why did I get a ticket? And I was like, I don't know. Cause your truck's sticking like eight feet out in the road. You're halfway. Well, where am I supposed to park road. it? I don't know. We built a parking garage for you fucks. Go use it. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, it's uh it's it's been an interesting spring break. There is a direct correlation between people's entitlement and their inability to understand how a roundabout functions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, I've noticed uh, that quite a bit. Not a lot of people know the roundabouts. No, I'm like, no. are you kidding me, guys? It tells you when you come in, just yield and then just go. Like, yeah. It's not it's not a hard concept. Unless you're trying to go through, it's not a hard concept. And even if you're trying to go through, they stop, you go through, you get out. It's like, I don't know. How do these people ever go to Beaver Creek? They have to drive through nine roundabouts to get to the parking lot. I have no idea. I forgot that about Beaver Creek, actually. I went to Beaver Creek one time and I just watched this car going around in circles in the one roundabout, totally like European vacation style, just in the inside (laughs) lane, just doing laps. They went around three different times while like cars were coming through. And I said, what are they doing? And then they just zipped right out. And I was like, somebody was just having fun. <laughs> we so, used yeah. to do that when we first got a roundabout in my hometown. It would just be drive around. And then one of our friends got pulled over for doing it because it was the double roundabout. So you go around and then there's like a road in between. And then you go to the other side and you can hit it like a figure eight if you wanted really. And yeah, it was stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you guys... You guys didn't just give us one roundabout. You made them double roundabouts and just watch everybody's eyes go crossed. Like nobody had any idea what the hell was going on there. Yeah, it's, uh, I don't know. My favorite is the people that will go and pay for the parking garage. And then they're like, I've got to move my car and get go one block over to be closer to the restaurant with the trough that I'm going to eat from. And I'm like, like, there's the restaurant. There's the parking garage. Maybe 200 feet of walking, people. Not a hard concept. Like, I, I don't I don't get it. The other one is today, because there's so much snow, the snowbank is so far from the curb. People are afraid to drive into the snowbank. So when I got back, I pulled up, and this guy's looking at me, and I just drove right across the snow, right to the edge of the sidewalk. And he's, like, looking at me, and he's, like, points, and I'm, like, yeah, I'm not sticking out my ass into my car out in the road. I'm not getting hit. No. I was like, every other car will get fucked but mine. That is, that is a tight road, too, that a lot of big trucks drive on for some yeah. reason. I noticed French Street always has a big truck on it. You're like, oh, okay. Like, There's what? always some sort of dually on it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Let's get this man spin. <laughs> We're already out in the weeds, 34 minutes in. We're still, yeah. we're 28 minutes behind. What you get? Oh, 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 I get to click the links. Yeah, all right, let's see. Okay, we got Orian at Mount Bachelor Sprain Skiers. That's a good thing. I like that. Uh, I like that. Well, there you go, buddy. You got yourself a small sticker pack. All I got to do is email us with your address again for the 50,000th time. Getting to a point where we should probably just have a spreadsheet that's easier. Just working be- on it. Okay. We're so, working on it. All right. Okay. We got this one from Chris. He went to week one of Blaze's Boot Camp. First time ever partaking in a snowboarding camp, and it was a friggin' blast. Highly recommend others to look into doing something similar if they have a chance. Blazes Boot Camp is solid. I like it. It's it's adult snowboard camp out at Bear Valley. 
uh, which is the backside of Tahoe. So it's not with like the rest of them, but when they get hammered with snow, you ride around with like Blaze Rosenthal, Corey Smith is there. My boy, Nate Musan, who used to do the not snowboarding podcast. And now it's the not podcasting podcast because it just doesn't do them anymore, but you get to go ride around up there. It's a solid event. Like I think people should go to it. I think it's, it's really good community building and stuff. So yeah. All right. Uh, we got this super chat from Ice Coast. It's 77 in my town. I've switched to shredding pork. <laughs> pork, pork. Is that smoked pork? Are you smoking it on the grill? Like, could be really crock pot pork. I did not. I did not get to eat enough food before this live stream. I'm fucking hungry. I ate a half a <laughs> half a package of El Fudge double stuffed cookies and a half a can of Pringles. Because you know, <laughs> nothing screams I'm a 41 year old adult like eating that for lunch. Yeah, I made a turkey sandwich, but yeah. <laughs> I am, I am, I should not be allowed to cook, like make my own food or grocery shop. I do not take care of myself at all. <laughs> smoked pork. Smoked pork. Oh, I'm all about smoked pork. Oh, you got nothing. I could go for some smoked pork. Uh, okay, we got this one from RC5. Will there be any new full wrap rum bindings coming out for next season? No. The only new, there's only two new bindings coming out next year. There's the Trace Pro and the Katana Pro. And the Katana Pro is ASIM wrap, and the Trace Pro is that two piece. It, it, I guess you could claim it's full wrap, but it's the plastic base with just the heel cup that slides in and out. Uh, let's see. Very battalion fly esque. I mean, that's yeah, the fly. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. All right, we got Mike Savicki. I'm six foot five, two hundred twenty five pounds with a size fourteen boot. What freestyle board would you recommend? Well, you're gonna want something wide, mm -hmm. very wide. Uh, depends how stiff you want to go, but like that. Spring Break Resort Twin is solid because it's already wide to begin with, and then they offer it in a wider. That one's good. Uh, mm -hmm. Huck Knife or Huck Knife Pro if you want it stiffer. That's, you know, you got that going on for you. Um, I don't know. What would you choose? There's options out there. I mean, if you want something possibly with like flat in between the feet or rocker, you could. I mean, with a 14, I would probably say like a lumberjack. Would not be a bad option there. A 225, like, you can put him on the 55 if he wants lower swing weight or bump him up to the 58 if he wants more stability. Yeah, that's something like that. But I think you're on the right track there with like a like a fat powder twin board as like a freestyle board there. Because like, yeah. I mean, you could do like a war pig, like because it is going to be wide and it is centered on the side cut. But you could do a it's twin gonna, pig too. You could do a twin pig, but you know you feel about that <laughs> i would probably go with a uh zero over a twin pig in the water. honestly the though size with a size make. 14 I, wait till next year i don't let me hang on a minute let me see if i can check the stats on this really quick and uh because that new that mayhem rad ripper from libtech Oh yeah, like that board. I mean, I think it looks sweet too. It's dude, got that board graphic. is so okay. Let's see what we got here. Uh, yeah, because they got a fifty nine with a twenty six one waist width on it, so it's probably gonna be like twenty eight something under the inserts, and it's full of camber. That and it doesn't have magnet traction. That board, that board was fun. Like I was, it's been a while since I've been that hyped on something freestyle focus from Mervin, which is funny. I rode that and I was like, I love this thing. Next day I ride the new legitimizer, which is supposed to be a combination of the box scratcher and box knife with cam rocker. And I was like, this board's a fucking turd. Um, otherwise an algorithm as well. Directional That'll hold the weight. Yeah. yeah. Well, at that point, why don't you just go to a bench warmer or a burnout? I don't know if they make it in that big. Because I was thinking like a 64 wide. Hang on. Let's uh let me let me look at this. Let's do some research quick. Yeah, we're doing research. We're doing science things, okay? We're scientists. This is what we do around here. This is it. Uh where is that? Uh, ah, 
goddamn pop-ups what the fuck you're not a porn site go away um okay let's look at the bench warmer here sizing there's a 54 wide which is 25.8 and there's a 57 wide which is 26 in the bench warmer and the 57 wide would it's for 210 plus pounds that'll be probably looking at the size it'll probably be like 28.6 at the inserts so that would theoretically work that's narrower than my 54 twin pig was yeah yeah so um let's see what else i feel like i'm missing something that should be obvious to me and i'm not i don't know why but you got options that's for sure we will do a top five boards for big footed riders i guess people keep asking so yeah yeah all right we got luchaos what board should i get for a soft jib board for midwest rail riding what do you got for this man uh gnu finest that was like the first thing that came to my head when i rode that board this past week was like yeah you take that on tow ropes all day and you're gonna be fine with it like they don't make a jump big enough for that board in the Midwest. I would say or it'll handle any jump in the Midwest. There, <laughs> there's nothing too big for it. There you go. Maybe Spirit, that one jump that they make every year, that it's like, mm. oh, that that but, step over that they build. Yeah, but I don't even know if they had snow for that this year. So I would say that one. Otherwise, like, you want soft? Hmm. You can do like an art, Rome artifact or a battalion disaster or Wally, depending what mood you're in. Yeah. I mean, depending on how soft you really want to go to, you could go like a West Mark as well, because that's actually not terribly stiff, but it is a little softer on the tip and tail there. So pressing makes it a little easier on it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's what I'd say. Otherwise, next year, that's going to be rocker. So yeah. All right, let's see what we got here. Okay, we got Jeff Wine. Hey, guys, looking to add an all-mountain board to the quiver. Currently have a K2 after black and excavator. Was thinking antidote. Big K2 guy, if you couldn't tell. Haha, <laughs> thanks again. Um, if you're looking for big mountain all-mountain, then yeah, the antidote. Otherwise, like, you know, you, it depends what stiffness you want. <laughs> That's that's really the thing, like, because you're gonna go alchemist antidote in the stiffer range, then you're gonna bump down to like your passport broadcast range in there, uh, manifest type of thing. But honestly, based on what he has already, I would probably go alchemist over the antidote, just because it's definitely more directional there, and like the after black, it's not similar to the antidote, but. They have similar tendencies where they're both like one's a directional twin, one's a directional, uh, or sorry, one's directional twin, one's twin. So like, I don't really think you need that board because they're almost in the same category ask a freestyle. But that's what that's what I would say at least. If you want to go stiff, go with the alchemist. If you don't want to go as stiff, go with the passport. Yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. All right, we got a super chat from Charles. Did you catch that Mary Rand was riding in Arbor Candle Rain for Natural Selection Tour? Also, Travis with the beanie helmet was interesting. <laughs> hashtag four foot pow day tomorrow. Hashtag RIP my knees. Dude, I saw that, and Travis was texting me about that too. And we were like, what the hell is he doing? Like, literally put his beanie on over his helmet. We're like, that's weird. And then I was like, I wonder if uh, Red Bull didn't send him his Red Bull helmet, so he had to do that instead. Um. So Red Bull, so what I found out from some of my friends that have been sponsored by Red Bull is sometimes they don't provide you with the helmet. You, you have to go, they have artists that will airbrush it for you. Oh. And I'm going to bet that the guy was busy or it didn't make it in shipping. So, mm. um. Because there used to be this kid, Sheldon Dennis, that lived here. He owns blank snowboards. He's a fucking chode. But uh, he had a Red Bull helmet. He found someone to airbrush it. like, And he kept telling everyone that he was an, a Red Bull athlete. And he was like, I turned down an $80,000 a year deal from 
Burton so I could ride for this other company. And he, he was just like, full of, I was like, dude, you can't spin above a five. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> but yeah, he had a Red Bull helmet and it was fake. It was a knockoff Red Bull helmet. Cause I think it was Ryan Runke saw him with it and was like, the fuck is that? That's not one of ours. And he's like, that's knockoff. Dude, you could buy them on eBay. Knockoff ones. Yeah. Like what? I don't know why you want one. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> People want that status symbol. I'm like, yo, if, I, if I've learned one thing, try to blend into the crowd so that way when you do something asshole-ish, no one knows where the fuck you went. You just like, I'm gone. Yeah. You know? I mean, realistically, if you want to blend in, just buy some shitty-ass dope outerwear. Yeah, <laughs> dude, everywhere. Everywhere. Oh, Charles, got yourself a small sticker pack. Boom. You know how to claim it. E email us info at angrysnowboarder.com. We'll try to get to that. Ugh. This is the dumbest question. Why not like hard boots if you're going to stiff boots like the Thraxis? Because I'm a fucking snowboarder, not a skier. Fuck hard boots. Fucking mono skier. Someone fucking boot this guy out of here. Put him in timeout for the rest of the day. I don't want to deal with this shit. All right. Our boy, Raul Duke. Again, thank you for the Endeavor Archetype recommendation. In AK loving it, three foot days. This dude oh, yeah. is just, he. this dude's getting it. He is fucking with some deep pow on the archetype. I always think it's funny. There's one dude, I used to be on this website called Snowboarding Forum. And he's just like, he hates me because I think I fucking called him a poser or some shit because he is. And he's like, that board is the worst pow board I've ever ridden. He's like from Chicago. And I was like, do you ever think that maybe you just don't know how to ride POW? <laughs> I was like, best POW run of my life. Top of Super B, all the way down the race course, four feet of snow. It was Kobe and I hovercrafted the whole way down on that thing. Just <laughs> doing like 70 miles an hour. Just <laughs> on that thing. That board is such a good POW board. Like there's a reason I've owned two. <laughs> there's a reason I'm probably going to get another one, but I want the 60 wide this time. Like, honestly, if they made that in a 64 wide, I'd be all about it. Max Jenke, if you hear this, 64 wide archetype for me. I know you can build one. It's just me. I don't even care what the graphic is. I don't give a fuck. So. Oh, 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 yeah. He'll get his stickers from me in person <laughs> when my boy Jesse comes to town. Ugh. God, nah, I cut my finger. Oh, my bandaid, my bandaid just that's broke. That's gonna suck doing dishes. I'm training my dog. <laughs> you know, she's got to learn somehow. Ugh. All right, let's see what we got here. <sighs> All right, we got David Sharp. Am I missing out on anything? 154 K2 Excavator for Pow and Trees, 164 Wide Shadow Band, 61, 210, uh, size 11 boots. You're covered with those two. Like, you really don't need anything else. No. Like, at this point, it's do you want something else? And honestly, if it is, like, I would probably push you maybe to, like, a Karua or something like that. You know? So, yeah. Yeah, maybe something more carvy, but... Yeah. Okay. We've got a super chat here from Ryguy. What is the best goggle lens for storm days? Anon kind of sucked. Uh, so I use a set of Oakley line miners with uh, um, pink iridium. The high, the high pink iridium for flat light and stuff. Otherwise, um, I also got a pink lens in my Dragon PVXs or PCVs or whatever the fuck they are. PXVs. PXVs, that's it, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Kind of depends on your eyes. It really depends on your eyes. Because I... So today I wrote a yellow lens on my RBXs. But like if I had a choice, I don't have a purple lens in that. But if I had a choice, I'd want a purple lens because 
that just works with my eyes so well. They make but, a purple lens? Mm-hmm. I, I have out. it on my PXBs, actually. It's a purple mirrored lens, but it pretty much works in every condition. It's not the greatest for, like, a straight-up bluebird day, like I'm squinting. But apart from that, it works really well. So, like, I, I mean, I had a pair of uh, electrics that, like, were purple lens, and I rode those every day no matter the condition, even if it was a night riding and it just worked for me. So I would say go try them on, but normally dragons work really well, like, because they're not going to fog up as much, and I'm assuming that's what's happening with your anons as well. Because on a dark, snowy day, you get warm. All that air goes straight up into your goggle, and you got fall. That's one thing I don't like about Anon. They put that magnet bullshit mask, and I was like, yeah, cool. And it just pfft, right up under there. Well, what they need to do is they need to take a page from Air Hole's book and, like, put a better, like, air hole in it. Because what I had to do with mine when I had a pair is I just took a knife and slid it open and ripped out. They have, like, some, like, meshing glued in there, and I took that out, and then it stopped fogging as much. So... Like, but yeah, I, it's a cool idea in theory, but in actuality, it sucks. Yep. Also, Tommy Bennett is in the chat. Hide your it's birds. <laughs> Hide your birds. Tommy, where were you today? Didn't see you at Copper. Two wheel drive you? couldn't make it. I saw I went to Keystone. Oh, that's right. He said he was going to Keystone. I forgot. Oh, well. When yourself a small sticker pack, so make sure you email us info at angry snowboarder with your mailing address, full address, zip codes included. We're not looking shit up. <laughs> All right. So we got a super chat here from Liam H. Need a board for deep days, trees, and steeps to complement my GNU headspace. Are these good picks? Which it does best with my Jones Mercury uh <laughs> bindings plus K2 Thraxis. God, he's taking a page from both of our books. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hmm. I mean, Ride Deepfake comes to mind. Yeah. You know, something like that. I mean, it's going to be good in the trees. It's going to be good in steeps. It's going to be okay on deep days. I mean, if you want to go full pow board, there's, you could do, there's like a bunch of stuff you could do. Like, honestly, I would say look at a Karoo, a pencil. Yeah. Or a Pintonic. Give yourself something like that. Actually, you want something unique. Check out the Stronda uh, Shorty. That thing will bust crust, ride trees, float well. I was on that today. That thing was fun. Yeah, I can see that. I was thinking uh, pick your line on ink. That's oh, good choice there, too. Yeah. It's, it's I mean, I, you know, I saw somebody mention it earlier for natural selection board. I was like, shit, I forgot about that board. That board would rip in natural oh, that selection. Fucked. That board will, yeah. That board would destroy so, them there too. So. so I would say something like that would be awesome for it. Like that's gonna be that's gonna wiggle. It's gonna sink for you on the tail. That nose will pop right up. Like, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah I mean, or yeah, an alchemist. <laughs> it's a bit <laughs> much for for deep days. Like you're gonna get leg fatigue. The um. Stormwolf from Jones. Yeah. Yeah, especially That's, for trees on that one. Yeah, that one's that one's good. Uh Rome Ravine, Ravine Select, depending which way you want to go. Captain Navigator. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you got options. Endeavor yep. Archetype, I think they're still blowing them out at like 40% off. So mm -hmm. can't go wrong with that. Oh man, spray some skiers for us, please. All right, we got our boy Coffin. Quitting job tomorrow. What's your best? Fuck it. I'm out. Story spray him. Hashtag Thirsty Thursday 25. I mean, I've been fired from a lot of jobs because I've just literally given up giving a shit about anything that they said to me. They're like, what do you, we're going to fire you. I was like, okay, I literally do not care. I just don't give a fuck. Like, I don't care. Fire me. I, I don't give a fuck. Like, I still think the weirdest one that I ever quit, 
I knew the end was near. I was working for a shop called Colorado Free Ride. And I was going to quit when I came back because I went to Big Bear to see a friend. And then I was going to come back and I was like, I, I was going to quit. And like the place fucking sucked. It was a train wreck of a job. And I was like, I'm going to quit when I come back. And the day before I get back, I get a call from one of my guys. And he's like, hey, man, there's a padlock on the front door. And I was like, what? Is there a notice? And he goes, yeah, failure to pay taxes. And I was like, that's fucked. And he's like, I can get through the window. And I was like, you should go in there. So he goes through and he gets all of his stuff out. And I was like, is the back door padlocked? And he goes, no. And I was like, cool, I can still get in there. Me and one of the guys, he went in and he just like, I took what I needed from there, like got all my stuff out. But one of the guys, there was a box with like 400 pairs of Oakley A-frames in it. And he just grabbed it and walked out with his severance. <laughs> it was like, he's like, yeah, they're getting foreclosed on. They're not even going to know it's gone. And then like someone broke the side window and would reach in and open it and go in. They stole like everything out of the store. <laughs> Jesus. It was fucking hilarious. Um, yeah, there's that. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I got... I kind of quit this one job. Like, they're like, what are you going to do? Quit? And I was like, yeah, but at the end of my shift and the rest of the shift, I didn't do shit but play video games and eat all the food in the employee fridge that wasn't mine. <laughs> just like, fuck you all. No one's getting dinner tonight. And just eat everything. Like, um, the, be the one that was the best was I quit Christmas Eve at Stevens Pass Rental Shop. So I was working for Stevens Pass. This was before Vale owned them. And when they hired me, they told me that I would be, because of my experience coming in, they were like, we're going to pay you this much. And I was like, this is it, right? And they're like, yeah. So we started and we had to go through like a five-week cycle before we got our first checks, which was fucking weird. So a check comes and I look at it and I'm like, this, this is completely wrong. So I go into the office and I was like, hey, man, this is wrong. Like you guys didn't give me a bunch of my hours. And they're like, no, this is your rate. And I was like, that's seven fifteen an hour. And I was like, you guys told me you were going to pay me ten fifty an hour. And they're like, well, you have to do this, this. And I was like, no, I was told this. And I go, I fucking quit. You can't quit. It's Christmas Eve. You're one of our best employees. You're this, you're that. And I was like, what are you going to do? I fucking quit. And they're like, what? And I was like, while they're telling me I can't, I punched out right in front of them, took off the name tag, took the vest, put it on the thing and said, fuck you. I fucking quit. And they're like, you, but, but you can't. And I was like, we need you. And I was like, that's not my problem. My problem is I was told I was going to be paid X and you're paying me Y suck a fart out of my fucking ass. I'm going snowboarding. Well, we gave you your pass. And I was like, no, you didn't. I bought it for $43 as a spousal dependent pass. Cause my girlfriend works here. <laughs> and I just went snowboarding for weeks and they would see me every day, every fucking day snowboarding. Then they're like, this, this guy just fucking quit. And I was like, I don't give a fuck. Like, I literally thought it was funny that they tried to tell me I couldn't quit. And I was like, it doesn't work that way. I can quit. There's nothing you can do. Well, there's literally nothing you can do. I don't know. You got any fun I quit stories? Oh, yeah. I, uh, I worked at a steakhouse and steamboat and one of the managers was just a dickhead to me. He ended up having a drug problem and having to go to rehab, but, um, he like would just yell at me and shit. And I was the expo. I'm the most important person there pretty much apart from like the cooks. And like, he just kept laying into me one week. I was like, you say any more shit to me. I'm just going to be out of here. It's a Friday of uh the fourth of july so there's 250 covers that night and he says one more thing he's like how about you just like do your job today and don't say anything and i looked at him and i was like all right i fucking quit and he goes what and i was like i fucking quit and the whole kitchen staff heard that and one of them clay rest in peace clay he passed away a couple years ago but he uh he goes yeah he's really being addicted he goes fuck it we're all gonna quit and like he was like, I'm out of here too. And he worked on the meat station at a steakhouse. So there was nobody else there for it. And like him and like all the other staffers in the back are like, maybe we'll leave too. And like almost started a mass exodus on this place on the busiest day of their year. 
And I was like going out, I was saying bye to everybody. I was like, later guys, like you're cool, you're cool. And then I just looked at the dude and I was like, you. And he's like, what? And I was like, fuck you, dude. I'm out of here. And then his boss came out and was like, I'll give you like four dollars extra an hour if you'll just stay. And I was like, nah, it's not worth it. And like walked out. One of my other bosses from the catering job was driving by and was like, what are you doing? I was like, I just quit work. He's like, I got a catering gig right now. You want to work? And I was like, sure, dude. And he just literally opened the door and I just hopped in and we just went and catered <laughs> like a wedding. <laughs> you literally like, okay, got cool. a job walking out the door right after you yeah. quit. Like that's the yeah. biggest fuck you to any of them. And my manager was just standing there still outside. Like, wait, what? Like I just hopped in the truck, left my car there and just like took off. And I was like, all right, later. Like, but yeah, it was pretty funny. And I like told like Clay, I was like, nah, you don't quit. Don't really like screw him over. And he's like, I already got two other jobs. I don't need this shit. And I was like, yeah, if they treat you bad, then you leave too. And then like a week later, he quit. <laughs> he just stopped showing up for work. <laughs> like, Makes okay. Sense. Yeah. I think everyone's, yeah, got, was, everyone's got one of those jobs. Like, fuck it, I quit. Like, It was, was a very half-baked for, thing. Yeah, I was working was. for this bar back in New York. And... I'd been there since they opened and there's this dude that was a pathological liar. He'd lied to the owner and we all warned him. We're like, don't listen to him. He's a fucking pathological liar. And so he, he hires him and I look at him. I'm like, Keith, I'm like, it's him or me. And he goes, well, I'm a man of my word and I made my word to him. And I was like, what about your word to me? Well, you're, you're, you know, and I was like, okay. I was like, you don't know. I was like, all your coolers are rigged wrong. That's why your beer keeps exploding in them. You don't know how to fix them. And I'm the only one that does. So I'm, and by the way, I just turned them down to the coldest setting and they're locked in that position. You're fucked. And I was like, oh, you pissed me off. I just called the health department. You have a health inspection coming up tomorrow. You're going to fail because of this, 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 and this. Oh, by the way, that new bar you built upstairs, I broke everything on it. I was like, fuck you. I quit. And he's just like, uh... And the best part is I walk out and my brother owned a bar next door and I walk in and I look at my brother. I was like, just quit. And he's like, you want a job? And I was like, sure. And so like, I'm out there hanging out outside the bar and everyone's like, aren't you working down at mountaintop? And I was like, mountain flop going out of business. No, literally the only reason that thing made it through the rest of the season was they would lock the door at 2 AM and close the blinds and basically run an illegal speakeasy. And then they got popped and just, fucking gone like didn't even make it a full year did you hear about the what was it black double black diamonds or whatever the bar at the uh the base of steamboat during covid no the one at the base of the grand there they uh they painted all their windows and doors black and just stayed open the whole time <laughs> but like just you like you would see them and you're like what the hell are those guys doing and like we're open dude and you're like hmm we are the only place open right now. And they just stayed open with everything painted black on the inside. And you're like, oh, that's they're closed now, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was the worst bar ever. Like the worst bar I've ever been to in my life. I've been to a lot. I've of never heard bars. anything good about that place. I forgot it existed. No. That place was bad. Then somehow it would get voted like best apparate place in Colorado like every year. And you're like, how are you paying you're giving for away free cocaine and shots? Anyone will vote for you. Not even good. Not even good cocaine. I'm pretty sure they watered down their booze. Like, oh, probably. That was like the just... mine here on Main Street. Like, fucking and people were telling me that they like before they'd open, the guy would go in and just fill like soda water into the vodka if it was like half to even it out and shit. I'm like, what the fuck? So okay. yeah, yeah, oh, well. Let's give this man a spin. Where are we going? Ouch. You lose. All right. We got Yim. Thanks, boys. I ride a 157 Alchemist. Should I size up a hair on the antidote or keep it at 157? I'm 165 pounds. Keep it at a 57. Yeah. You're good. Mm -hmm. You're I'm good. about the same weight. That's exactly what I rode. And it was awesome. And I ride the 57 uh, Alchemist. So. Oh, ouch. oh, full, full row, full rotation. I 
I like this one from Coach Rich. Why do I like copper so much better than Breck besides that it's not a Vail Resorts mountain? Because it's a better mountain. It gets better snow. It's not as busy. Like yeah. the busiest day this year has probably only been like twelve to 13,000 people. And Breck's busiest day was probably like 30,000. So... Uh, yeah, I feel like no matter where you go at Breck, every fucking lift has a line at it. And you're like, I don't even know where all these people are. I think they just stand on the lift lines all day. So the only way to ride Breck is you have to have lived here and understand what, what I call the wave. Because there is a wave when people come up to eight and how they disperse. And you have to ride the wave staying in front of it. People will be like, I would do a run at Breck. And they'd be like, that's good. Let's go do it again. Can't. What? can't lift line's going to be too long. We got to go down to the next chair lift. And they'd be like, what? Yeah. We go down to the next chair and we'd work our way over to 10. Then we'd work our way back. And as we're working our way back, we would go past and they were like, what the fuck's up with that lift line? And I was like, and they're like, is that why we did one run? We got the untracked power and we just dipped. And I was like, yep, that's it. Like that, that's just how it is. Ugh. All right. We got a super chat from letters spin for win hashtag RIP L stackers adventures. Our boy winning winning that jumbo sticker. This man has won more stickers than anyone else. So many. So many fucking stickers. Oh my so god. So fucking many. At this point, he we should just keep track of it. And when he hits a certain amount, we just upgrade him to a free hoodie or something. Probably be yeah. cheaper for us at this point. In shipping, uh, yeah. hundred percent Letters, let us know if you want that when you email us. Yeah, we let us know if that works that. for you. Yeah, we could do that. Oh my god. All right. Uh, we got Nick Wood recently swapped out the training finder 57 for an Orca 53. Malavita is not cutting it. Binding Rex missed the Cartel X, but fancy trying something new. Astro full reps, deep days only. Appreciation from the UK. Uh, if you're coming from a Malavita, the Astro full reps probably going to be overkill. You'd probably be better off going with a blaster full wrap from Battalion. Are we but, putting them on the Orca? Is that what yeah. we're doing? Yeah. That's why I think the Astro would be overkill for an Orca. Yeah. That's why I'm surprised the Malavita is not cutting it. Yeah. yeah. Well, it could be an old Malavita. Yeah, I don't it know. probably is. They don't make it anymore after this year. They don't? It's gone. Oh. They was got like rid of the, the binding, binding that they made most it. top sheets of any board. Also, that double take system sucks nuts. Yeah. Uh, hmm. Honestly... Like you're looking for something like I maybe like a Union Atlas, that wouldn't be a bad one. Do that, uh, Jones Mercury, because TC will tell yeah. you that that's the best. But yeah, yeah. like either, <laughs> like if the Malavita is not cut, like the Astro full wrap would be too much. Honestly, maybe a Rome DOD that might be a better one for you. So I was thinking even like a K2 edition or Ooh, that's a, well, like, coming from a unibody binding, the edition would make the most sense. And yeah. that would be very comparable to that cartel X in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, and then, well, it depends what year cartel X he has as well. Yeah. Cause if it's a super old cartel X, then that's going to be stiff ass binding. But if it's only the past couple of years, that's just a regular cartel at the end of the day. So, yeah, um, but yeah. even like a Solomon Highlander might be great for you Ooh, just because that, that, that'd actually be a really good binding for that board. Yeah, because that's going to allow you to have set that lateral play, but you're still locked into the thing like you have a little bit of lateral, but for the most part, it's you and the board and that shadow fit feels great this year. feels so good. <laughs> yeah. This isn't blank. All right. We got insulin 801 Gordita gang. I want a Gordita right now. I'm so fucking hungry. I could, I haven't eaten Taco Bell. Taco Bell Thursday? Years. I, could, I, I could go for a Gordita. Fuck. I am hungry. Yeah. It might be a Taco Bell weekend. I don't know. Toe side. Never. All right. 
I like this one from Ronan. RIP people driving up I-70 tomorrow. Somebody's going to flip a car and die. Uh, I would be surprised if it stays open all day. Just oh, with yeah. how many cars were sitting on it, just caught, like just running, leaving all that black ice with, and then covering it with snow. There's going to be a lot of cars in the ditch and a lot of broken guardrails, I think. Or some two-wheel drive cars from Florida or Texas are going to stop everybody. Oh, 100%. Fingers crossed on that one. Sorry, guys, if you're down there, but uh, I kind of like having the mountains to ourselves. It's been good. It was nice. It, it was been nice awesome. Today. It was great. Was Rolled today. up a flyer, parked right next to Kobe and Lauren. Fucking went and rode, met up with Eli and Creston. It was a fucking, it was a great day. I mean, we could have parked like that uh, that snowmobile trailer, and everybody could have still parked. Like oh, we yeah, could have no. done whatever we, we wanted. Four spots, and it would have been amazing. Yeah, we got a super chat here for you from Jack Off Beat TC. Got the ride fuse boots to replace my lasso pros mm -hmm. for next season. What's your go-to lacing method for tight ankle, shin, but loose toe box? Hashtag NST robbery. Hashtag beanie helmet. <laughs> Let me go grab my boots real quick, and I'll show you. Oh, there we go. It's okay. Speaking of boots, though, we will be talking about these. The new battalions. Like, this. This boot is fucking stiff. Yeah. Oh, my God. What? You can't. And a half. Oh, my God. There we go. I got it to flex a little. So, if you want them loose on the bottom, what I'll do is when you got your boot here, I'll just cross my first ones up. And lock them in like loose like this, where you can like easily stick your finger in. And then from there, go super tight, like yank the living shit out of these. Cause this one down here is already be locked. Like as you can see, I don't know if you can see this. Like when I pull on it, this one's not actually moving down here. Like it still slide this around and everything. Do that, lace it up normally, time super tight up top, like as tight as you could possibly get. And then here's the trick. So when it's like this and you already have them in, the lace locks, tie it around, do your like beginner knot thing, go really tight, and then right here, come from the bottom and snap them back into place and then tie your, like tie them regularly, like whatever. But that's normally how I'll do it. So I'll have two of these laces right here like that, and it'll keep this top part really tight and the bottom looser because I have a problem with that too. If I tighten these too much, It'll just cramp my foot and kill it. And then once you get it nice and tight, take your side boa and just tighten it until you can barely feel it on your foot. And it'll just stay super locked up up here and loosey-goosey down here. And that's how I lace my boots too, actually. They don't make a boot that I can make tight enough for me anymore. Yeah, you tie yours like footballs. <laughs> actually, mine is about this tight now too. Like, it is. The Velcro doesn't attach anymore on it, so... I'm I might pop my boots. Here. Just tightening my boots today, and fucking Kobe and you were like, "Jesus Christ, dude!" It's <laughs> like the whole thing is, and I was like, "It's not tight enough. I got to put some foam in here." <laughs> I like how Jarvis ties his tennis shoes. <clears throat> That's ridiculous. It's I don't know. I I will I won't lie though. I'm really intrigued by how stiff this boot is. Like this could be something I'm interested in for next year. Yeah. Ooh. Next question gets a spin, so we got to go find a question that's not a super. But yeah, chat. hopefully, Jack. Hopefully, you're able to see that enough to to get the idea. But keep the bottom ones looser when you when you put them into the lace locks, and then just crank the shit out of it. So, yeah. Uh, let's see. All right, we'll take this one from Fernando Ponce. Which carving board would you use on perfect corduroy? That's a loaded ass question. Do you know how many boards I've written? <laughs> yeah. Fuck. There's so many options. The Karua stuff hasn't even shown up yet. And I asked for a bullet train because they're bringing it back. So um, I don't know. Like when I think about it, probably like for me, it's been really like I really dug that Stranda Biru, Baru, Biru. That, that thing was fun for turning on, just ripping groomers. I mean, there's so many. There's so many good boards out there these days that like you can kind of choose it, but pick and choose what you want. But that's like one I would really 
consider. I don't know. It's like maybe a crew of pencil just because it's just kind of floaty and fun. What about you? Free Carver 9000. I fucking love that board, dude. That thing was so much fun just on a fresh Roy day. I, I'd rather ride a six, but I think that's me. I can see that. I, I like more torsion. It's like, like there's no speed, like speed limit on it. Oh, no, no. That thing is all gas, no brakes. And it doesn't even feel like you're going that fast until you blow past like a ski racer and you're like, oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Another <laughs> one I would consider would be the Arbor Padre for next year. That board's okay. fun. That one's really, really fun. Let's get this man a spin. Ouch. You lose. Oh, man. All right. Uh, we got this super chat from Numb. I eat a Dorito taco from Taco Bell Epic. Hell yeah. Did they just get those in Canada? I want to know what flavor too. Was it the Cool Ranch? Was it the it's spicy cool, one? Cool Ranch. Could be Doritos Locos. Yeah. Oh, click the links. Click the links. Um. All right, Jackoff B. You boys ridden the ride moderator yet? Want to know how it compares to the deep fake? It's sitting in the plastic in the hallway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That Those one. will be in a few weeks once we yeah. get through. K2 we got a lot on our plate. Like. I think just this week alone, I think between the two of us, we rode, we'll ride like 18 products, almost 20. Like, yeah, I'll have 10 this week. Yeah. So you had 10 and I'll have eight. So that's 18. Mm -hmm. Like I got a double count, but I, I, and just double check this, but I'm pretty sure we're at like almost a hundred reviews, which is ridiculous for next year. So if you're a member of angry snowboarder VIP, Starting April 1st, you're getting a written review every day. Like all of April scheduled, almost all of May, half of June, and then like a quarter of July has been scheduled. So it's crazy. Like, and I maybe I might have something in August already. I'm not sure. So all right. We got a super chat here from Gus Chiggins. Thank you for hooking us up with the mysterious cultural links. Yeah, well, you know, somebody's got to get you guys checking out all the different content that's out there, you know, because none of these influencers know what real snowboarding is. They think riding around with a fucking dildo on their head is, has anyone looked at the helmet mount for the Insta three or that? Yeah. That Insta 360. It looks like a fucking big black dildo sticking off your head. That thing has to be like straight unicorn. Dude, it's a fucking black dildo. I don't care. Like I'm at the point where I think it would be funny to be like, oh, hey, hang on, man, you got something on your helmet. Go up and put a suction cup dildo on and snap the Insta off. So they're just riding around with a floppy <laughs> dick for a couple runs. Like, that's what it looks like. Maybe that's what we do is we'll buy a bunch of fucking suction cup dildos and just start sticking them on people's helmets when they're not looking. <laughs> just So they're just in the lift line with a big old dick flopping around because that's what it fucking looks like. Oh, my God. It's ridiculous. <laughs> side never we are so far out in the fucking weed <laughs> <laughs> all right we got Hess scott 1986 oh my god is a shit show what's up that was from like an hour ago i know i know we're so far <laughs> in the fucking weeds this is how bad we are as hosts we're the yeah, worst go back to it. yeah steve with the shit show <laughs> we're the fucking absolute worst we are the literal absolute worst Ugh. Oh, this isn't blank. Ouch. Our boy Pat Zaransky up in Leadville. Duly lifted truck is best winter vehicle. Don't at me. I can't wait for spring break to end. You and me both, buddy. You and me both. I can't even imagine what the spring break crowd is up like at Ski Cooper. That just has to be like spring break on steroids. Oh, my God. Lose the turn. Okay. Uh, take this one from Joe Gunn. Why do binding companies not offer two style toe straps with their bindings? One for bulky wide boots and one for pointy boots, or at least a one strap that can flip and change the shape it grips. Uh, they've done this. 
it just becomes a shipping yeah, it, it's a shipping and cost issue it's like you know you look at a lot of companies and it's like well we designed it for this boot you know so like battalion's going to design it around a battalion which means it'll work with a nidecker and a room solomon's going to do solomon k2 is going to do k2 ride's going to do ride you know everyone kind of does everything for themselves Ugh. yeah i mean for the most part they try to make it like i like Back in the early 2000s, it was like, you have a Burton boot, you better have a Burton binding, otherwise this shit ain't going to work. Like, Oh, man, um, back in the day, like, so back in the day, like, if you, because there was a point where Burton really was the best binding out there. Mm -hmm. If you had a bulky, if you had like a DC or a 32 and you were trying to put it into a Burton binding, you had to go take a Dremel and grind the material off the boot to get it to fit into the heel pocket. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I could see that. But I don't know. They they all try to make it so it will fit like any boot. But yeah, I know what you mean where you're like, damn, this is a great binding, but the toe strap fits like shit. And when it fits like shit on the tip of your boot, I always just rock it on top. Just put that's it, go old thing. school with it. Like, because that's uh, what happened with the fixed ones. It was like, oh, that's not going to fit my square toe box. Like a round one, I imagine it fits perfectly. It was literally but, this binding. Yeah, it it's still set up the way I ride it. <laughs> yep, right over the top. And, yeah. And it worked. It worked. It was super comfortable that way. I had no, no problems with it or anything. But the second I put it on, like, over my toe and landed something a little flat, I just feel that just toe just drop straight down. And it's like, okay. Same thing used to happen on my old Union Forces, the Classics. Same exact thing. If I put that thing over the toe, it was slipping off my square toe box every single run. Yeah. People don't so, understand that I have a whole graveyard of snowboard bindings just sitting here. There's like, it's there's a like, shit there's show. like 30 pairs just sitting there. Like I just reach over and just grab something and I'm like, oh. And it's not like they're together connected. They're just like no, they're just in they're there free. randomly. Yeah, they're, 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 they're free willy-nilly willy there. Yeah, so... All right, we got this super chat from PZMs. If you can't navigate a roundabout, you can't navigate the creek. Hashtag no cookies for you. Hashtag spray skiers. Hashtag slush season is upon us. Hashtag click the links. Facts. Ugh. Well, where's it going? Oh, this isn't blank. All right, we got Mulderer. Have you ridden the Battalion Chameleon yet? Yes, I have. That board fucking turns. It's uh, it, that does not ride like any other battalion I've ever been on. Yeah, it's so, Chilton. That is a Chilton board for sure. All right, we got a super chat from Treeboro One. What's good, Uncle Averin and TC? Thank you guys for all you do. What size do you guys recommend if I was to pick up the K2 Passport? A 5'10", 190, size 10.5 boots, right here in the Pacific Northwest, mainly off piste and tree runs. Oh, yeah, you're in that heavy snow, so you're looking at least for a 60 or up. Like, that's you're exactly, gonna I was wide. like, 160 is the smallest you want to go. Yeah, yeah, that's like the smallest. Like, what was it? Is it is it the 63 or 64 wide, or is it a 62 wide? 64 wide. Okay. I would go 60, say, 63, 64 wide, 61 wide. There is a 61 wide? Okay, so that would be the so. smallest. I don't but know. Anyways, yeah, like, I would probably go with the 64 wide. Like if I live back up in the Northwest, I would probably be riding boards eight centimeters bigger than I do for down here. Like I don't uh -huh. have to worry about shit down here. I just blow through everything. <laughs> up there, you need way more float. Ugh. Oh. 59 wide. 62 yes. wide is the biggest wide. They go with the 62 wide. Start with that. Yeah. Otherwise, it goes up yeah. to a 64, which is also pretty wide. I think, right? 63. 63. 63. Okay. Yep. So you can you do that do one, too. Oh. The spectrum on that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Ouch. Lose a turn. All right. Let's I'm losing see. God, we are so far in the weeds. All right. 
All right, we'll take this one from Aiden Callahan. Bindings for the Karua Transition Finder. So Union Force, I think that's a really good solid one. I would do a Rome Katana, and I would maybe look at like a Ride C8. What about you? Jones Mercury, <laughs> of course. Uh, and then I'd probably go, I, dude, I really like those Highlanders a lot. Like that is a such a solid binding. Um, so I would say those, and then I would probably, probably like a K2 bond. I would go with a bond over the addition on that board, I think, just because of the lateral play on it. Which is really funny because he followed it up. I have a pair of K2 bonds with those work. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, they would. Yeah, so save the go. money. That'll be perfect. Yeah, there you go, bud. Go ride. You're validated. Um, <laughs> all right. We got Ted G. Snow guts finally delivered to the East Coast. Did they know? Like, I feel like I you guys got after. raped all season. <laughs> raped and robbed. It was bad. Yeah. Ted, you want yourself a small sticker pack? Email us info at angrysnowboarder.com and TC will eventually mail it out. <laughs> eventually. All right. All right. Yeah, like we got like 200 pieces uh, of mail right there. I got to get out of We got Chin Wen. Hi, Angry. Any board recommendations for both that are good at buttering and carving? Women, 56 kilograms, size 5.5. You're going to have to choose one or the fucking other. Like, you know? Like if you would, you're gonna sac sacrifice the power of a good carve to have a soft board you can butter, or you're gonna have to learn how to butter something a little stiffer. Yeah, so, you know, it's kind of where it is. I don't know. Like, I mean, I would probably go directional twin board and yeah. just do both of them decent. I so like a twin sister by Jones or. Like a birds of a feather. I mean, that's a true twin board, but that'll work. It's gonna carve all right, but it'll be better at buttering because the nose and tail are gonna be softer on it. Otherwise, yeah. I mean, if you, I mean, yeah. What do you got for them? There's part of me that's like, you should just get a Karua. But they don't make anything in like the auto small enough. Um, so and fifty six kilograms. I mean that's tiny. Uh, yeah. So it's a five and a half boot. <laughs> I know, and I'm just like, just find something with a good side cut that'll grip that's playful because at that point you can just manipulate the board how you want. You know, like you don't need to go with something. Like it sounds like you just need a good flexing park board. That's it. With a good side, yeah, cut, fine. I was thinking maybe a Cortado by LibTech as well. Yeah, you could do that. That's got the mag for carving, but I don't really know how buttery it's going to be. Honestly, yeah. like, there's part of me that's like, just get a Battalion feel better. <laughs> yeah, you can do that too. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'd say Twin Sister. Good luck finding it on sale, though. Those boards. Fell out every fucking year. Yeah. Let's give him. Give him a spin. I mean, I feel like Ride would have something solid in there too. Like, was it the Saturday? Is that it? A Saturday's true twin. That one's gonna be stiffer. That's got carbon five in it. Oh, it could five. be. You, I mean, one? you could go, could go psycho candy, yeah, butter the shit out of the nose. You could, yeah. Not too much. Quick the links, yeah. You know, there's stuff. All right, Ted G. Rex for an all mountain freestyle board to complement my non-validated flight attendant. East Coast size ten boot, 170 pounds, three big toes. It's a lot of big toes, dude. Yeah. Went to school with a guy that had three testicles. All right. That's a full sack. Big one. Baby yeah. gravy everywhere. Are they all hooked up? I don't want to know. All right. <laughs> the best was when he'd have to go get a physical in high school. He's like, wish me luck, boys. And I was like, how bad is she going to freak out and tell you? you have Like every time he'd be Answer. like, yeah, they'd be like, you, there's, if that's not supposed to be there. You have a lump. And he's like, oh, God, am I going to die? And he'd come back and he's like, I got him again. 
It's just, it makes me think of uh, Austin Powers' gold member when he's like, oh, let me see if my nuts are still there. He goes, one, two, three. All right, they're all there. <laughs> and it's like, wait, what? What? Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. Uh, try, try not. All Mountain Freestyle board. It's complimenting a flight attendant. That board sucks. Some directional twin. For sure. Oh, the flight attendant just sucks. Like, fucking burn that thing. <laughs> Hmm. I fucking hate that. That's the most uninspiring board ever. Ugh. Nope. I was looking to see if the four, how much mag it had on it. The four <laughs> by four. Uh, I think it's a five point mag. Yeah, it's not. It's very subtle. It's not yeah, a lot. It's very mellow on that. Yeah, no. Yeah. Um, um, I mean, you know, I don't know. Like, you can always oh. go with the old standby, the Captain Mercury, Jones Mountain Twin, Ride Shadow Man, Ride Algorithm if you want something stiffer. You know, there, there's like, best thing you could do, just go hop on our top five all mountain freestyle board list. There's eight boards in there. Any one of those will be solid. I was going to say uh, LibTech TRS, because that will carve through ice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, let's see. God, we are so far in the weeds. <laughs> okay, we'll take this one because this resonates from Brian Lanos. Hey, Avery, I'm getting old and thinking of getting a damp setup. Recommendations for insoles, board, and bindings. Thank you. So I'm a remind guy. TC, you're using FPs? Cetus Customs. Cetus, that's it. Yeah, not FPs. Fuck FPs. Yeah. Ben's got to put that video together with the cinder block and the bowling balls so we can prove mm -hmm. that FPs suck. Um, fuck FPs. Uh, yeah, Cetus. I, I mean, the big thing is like kind of find the one that works for your foot in there. The bigger thing is like bindings. If you're looking for a more damp binding, Battalion. Yeah. That I don't have a pair in here. <laughs> I really? I, I, I gave oh, yeah, back you gave back. back yesterday. You gave back. I came back to the rep yesterday. That's how we ended up with battalion boots. I had to change the boots for the bindings. So, um, but yeah, like that Astro full wrap or ASIM wrap, the pad on there is so damp. And then it's got the Duracush base. It's fucking phenomenal. The next best would be going with like one of the nitro bindings with the air ride system. Those are two of the best that you could get out of anything. And in my opinion, like they're just, they're super, super damp. And like, I don't know. It was real funny at Thirsty Thursday meetup. Like seriously, 30 people had battalion bindings. <laughs> just looked down and it was like, that's our handiwork. <laughs> yeah. So, but I mean, yeah, those, those would be great bindings for sure. And then board wise, I would probably look at like a ride or a Mervin board, honestly, if yeah. you want damp, like those would be the two that I would say just cause or, or something with the urethane sidewall. Like, yeah. Urethane sidewall, which you can get that from other brands too. Yep. But um, if you look at a Rome board, look for something that's got the flax impact plates, or mm -hmm. if you're willing to pay the money, you go to a Jones and like the ultra mountain twin or the ultra flagship because they've got those that wood underfoot that really yeah, does bamboo. work. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. no, they've got that. What is it? It's at the ash top sheet. Then there's like there's like some yeah. hardwood too in there. It's it's the bamboo is underneath the plate. There is at those plates that you can see. But yeah, that that ash veneer top sheet literally yeah. just cuts down everything. And that's why they put one on the navigator that, that for this coming season too. Was to try to cut down on chatter and shit. So anything with a wood top, I mean, Arbor felt pretty damp as well. Like if you get something with a high quality wood top sheet on it, not like any other cheaper park boards, but that would be something to look at as well. It just depends on what style of board you're looking for too. Like it's hard to give recommendations when <laughs> like, I don't know, yeah. something with the, yeah. All right. We got do you even nature, bro? I just bought a Solomon double ass in. I want to build my ground tricks. Are my 2018 Rome Katanas good enough or should I buy freestyle binds? Katanas are fine. You got the old 2018. That's the old heel strap on there. You're fine. Yeah, like, you'll be fine. Yeah, you're good. It'll actually match that board well, too. Yeah, you're fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, 
uh, let's see. Take this one from Leo Nickerson. I'm up in the middle of Alberta and currently riding a 156 Rossi one mag 2017 size eight boots was wondering if a nitro dinghy would work as a daily driver to replace. You don't want a dinghy. It's so fucking wide with a size eight. You're just, it, it's not going to be fun. It's going to suck to turn. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's see. Uh, okay. I'll take uh, the super chat from Melderer. Any changes on the 2025 Battalion Beyond Medals? Show us the Battalion Boots. Hashtag pretty please. You rode the chameleon yet? Yeah. Ridden the chameleon? We'll start talking boots. Let's go for it. Let's talk about uh, it. Should we answer the changes? There's no changes on the There's board. no changes in the Beyond Medals. Graphic. Uh, Gra yeah. The, last year's graphic, way cooler than this. Way cooler. Years, I think. But way cooler. Way cooler. But yeah, let's uh let's talk about these battalion boots. So these two are basically the exact same, just double bow up, lace. That's it. And the boots are actually stiffer than you'd think. But so Nidecker and Battalion hired the old boot designer from Ah God, I'm dropping shit. They hired the old boot designer from Burton. And so you can clearly see that there is definitely some Burton inspiration with the way it's designed. And then I'm going to get this thing out. God, that is in there. Got to open this thing wide. Because I'm really, Jesus Christ. Oh, of course, Chad Lewis left everything inside the boot. Yeah. And brand new, dude. Brand new. Brand new. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Still smells good. Oh, okay, I got that. Let's see if I can get this out now. God damn. What size is this fucking thing? It's 27. Okay, so it's a nine. They claim that this is a soft boot, that it's a not it's a four out of ten. It's called the salsa. I like that. Well, you like Taco Bell too. Yeah. Jesus Christ, this thing does not want to come out. Like, I cannot Did figure you release out. the... Uh, Everything's released. Know. Everything's okay. released. Did they have the pull strap on the side? Not on the side. It's just boa. So. Okay. But I have released... God, this thing does not... There we go. Holy shit. That's a fucking C bar if ever I've seen one. Yeah. Listen to that. That thing is beefy. Toe hugger toe box. Like, is that a neoprene toe box? <sighs> yes. Oh. Neoprene toe box. Let's see how bad the foot that is. That I'm curious about. Well, it's got a little little heel foam, but. No arch support. That is, that is a Burton one. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Like this. I mean, <laughs> that is a Burton foot bed. It's a Burton liner. Like it's an old Burton liner. What's up? It's an old Burton liner. They do not oh, yeah. look that good anymore. No, no, their shit's gotten cheaper. <laughs> this yeah. is back when their boots were actually semi decent. But goddamn, that is an aggressive like butterfly C wrap on that thing in that liner. Like, it looks like the uh, the Vans one that they put. So Vans yeah, used so to come with X X bars that you could actually wrap in yourself, which sucked. And now they just started stitching them in. But that's what it looks like. Yeah, except this definitely is like. It just looks like a more higher end. Like, this has actually got some stiffness in the back of it, which oh, is nice. awesome. So that's really cool. This is the one that I'm curious about. This thing is so fucking stiff. Like, this is the one that I'm curious about. And this is the Acid Boa. And they claim it's a 6 out of 10. 
And I was like, God, do you have a boot? Do you have a boot coming out that's even stiffer? But it's crazy because it's got a burrito wrap liner to it. And I'm like, that's cool. So I'm like, I can get down with that little burrito wrap going on in there. It's got the 3M thin slate in there. Uh -huh. God. Jesus Christ. Well, there's nothing inside of it either. This it, it's it's literally that back spine is so tight in there. It just does not want to come out. And I do not want to shred my fingers on this. God, how did I used to pull liners out of boots every day? I don't know. I do it every day. Gross. I leave my shit in there and let it get moldy and then kill my dog. Nope. Liners, footbeds, all that shit come out every day, which I actually have to do. I had boots that were so on. stinky one time. My German shepherd used to growl at him when he'd entered the room. Like his fur would go up and he'd be like... Rrr. I had to keep him out in the mud room away from him because he I seriously thought he was going to kill him. Yeah, I don't know. Mine just pop right out. I just grab him by the ankle holds here and just yank it. There you go. It's got that it's got that foam on the bottom. Where? That's like a 32. And then it's got the same back spine, but it's I mean, I love the fact that it's a burrito wrap. I do like, like the that's wrap liner. Give so much more power into the front. And they did it right too. They put the little stitching in there so that it's got that. So can you slide that on real quick? No, it's an eight and a half. Yeah, I know, but it's got a neoprene toe box, so it should stretch. <laughs> My left is a nine and three fourths. That's not going to work. That is I not going to work, dude. I fit into eight and a half nines. Same, same foot yeah. bed, though. But, God, there is a deep, holy shit. When you see these, like, so the natural J bar right in here and here, I don't think I could wear these. It'd be too tight. Like, this is tighter than the old Solomons. Probably like Vans is. I'm going to put that eight and a half on when I get to your house to film. I don't know if you can see it. Like, yeah, I'm going to put those on. Are those oh. made to walk outside, though, with the rubber on the bottom? I maybe. I'm like, does it come? Does it double as an Afray boot? That'd be sick. Toe hugger. But this, I mean, it's crazy, like, how well built this is for a fucking sample. Like, I used to get sample K2 boots that did not look this good. Yeah. <laughs> like, God, there is a ton of foam. Though. Like, this is thick foam. Like, right here, this is super thick on the instep and stuff. So, but, yeah. Huh. These are... Eh, keep that boot out. I'm going to look at it when I get there. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. When we film... Keep that thing out. It's not like... Like, if I put it back in the box it's in, it's not like you can't open it. <laughs> that's true. But... Yeah, this actually, like, but if he's doing the Nidecker boots, too, I'm really curious how those are going to, like. I thought Nidecker boots were really nice when I put them on before. They've come a long more. way. Like, I mean, part of the reason they bought Flow was so that they could get access to boot molds. And then they. Yeah, they're, I mean, their boots last year fit, fit well. Like, when I worked at Evo, I was putting them on all the time to check it out. And I was like, these actually feel pretty nice. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, these are, I don't know. Like, I'm curious, but, like, if they had a 10, I I could put it on my small foot, and then I could see how tight that's going to be on the Achilles and everything. Like, it's crazy. The fuck? There's like some German writing in here. Freudenberg. So, I don't know, man. There's. Huh. Oh, they're made in Vietnam. 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 
But I went over to Vietnam and Jenny was having man touch her boobies. <laughs> One of Where's the best comedies ever Greatest made. comedy ever made. It is. I'm going to stand and die on that hill. Whatever. Jenny's the worst villain ever. She is. I, I do agree with that. She held Forrest's child forever until she was about to die being like, hey, by the way. I know he's in like first or third grade, but uh, you do have a son named Forrest. Yeah. So the crazy thing is, if you push on this right here, you can actually see Soft. the. Well, it'll pull the soul in from the side, hmm. but it does have Vibram. That's weird. So, like, God, that toe box too is like that thing. I like is, a hard toe box. I like a hard toe box. Dude, you don't have to worry. Like, you can kick shit then and not have to worry about it. Like, yeah. So. Um, just so everyone knows, we are working on like a specific boot series of videos. Um, I don't want to say anything more because lately, anytime we talk about anything we're doing, someone suddenly copies us within two weeks. So there is something. Which is a form of validation, I guess, but in the same token, it would be nice. It just sucks because then like something we worked on, they, they put out and you're like, fucking God damn it. Yeah. Uh, uh. So, you know, it, it is, but it's got the H4 coiler on it. I like that. I do too. And that's what's the side coiler? Is it an M2 plus? Yep. Okay. Yep. So, I guess that one's pretty easy to fix. I mean, it looks like it. You, it's it's actually the way they designed it is how you used to supposed to be where you jam the screwdriver in and pop it yeah I that's how they that designed right it there. yeah they don't want you using the channel locks anymore i like i the mean channel locks. i don't blame them they, make, they made life so much easier than that screwdriver technique i miss the old ones with the little tool through the front like i was so good at changing those when i worked in a shop people be like Everyone would be like, I went to three shops and no one will fix it. I'll be like, I was like, give me 10 minutes. And they're like, what? And then I'd be like right at the front counter and I'd just take it out, relace it, put it right back on. I'd be like, here you go, 20 bucks. And they were like, I went to three shops. That was fast. Yeah, those ones had a lot. Those ones used to have a lot of parts where you undo the front screw, like out of the dial. And then you'd have three other screws and then one underneath too. And it's like, don't lose a screw. Otherwise you're screwed. No oh yeah, no, that one, so that one, like the internal screws, you would tighten them down to hold the cable actually in. Yeah. And those ones, they weren't hard to work on if you knew it, but like you said, if you lost anything. So I, I, I had a boot workshop when I worked at this one shop and we had like a magnet strip for like screws and stuff for ski boots and shit. And I used to go back there because the screw would stick to the magnet strip and then I didn't have to worry about shit. I also Every like this there. on this one. Like you get the booster strap. Like, yeah, uh, the booster strap is nice. I wish more boots had that. The power strap. Yeah. Like that's that's solid. Um and they they did do like an anodized metal eyelid on this too, which is good. Does it have a lock on it? Like yes, it does. Oh, it's thick. Okay. So yeah, these like these boots are fucking solid. Like for a first year. You know what's off, funny? They look like a Solomon launch on the outside. That one specifically. Yeah. That looks identical to a launch. Oh, I think they drew inspiration from every best selling boot they could find, and they were like, I mean, I don't see why you wouldn't. If you're getting into the boot market, you better buy everybody's boots all their top sellers and try to make a hybrid of all those. Is that a hard toe box too? All of them have hard toe boxes. I like, like that. That's good. Hard toe box. Huh? With, and this has rubber. It's all rubber on the outside too. Like that's going to be way more durable. What kind of foam is on the bottom? Soft? Or is it a good pack? It's good. Like, okay. This isn't like, it's not that shitty ass foam that you're going to wear down super fast. And then you're, like, this actually looks really, like, they put some money into this to make it yeah. work. And these are, 
these are fucking super super solid so yeah you know i don't think you can go wrong with that Ugh, I'm, I'm super stoked on that all right uh let's give this guy a spin we are so far in the fucking weeds it's 458 yeah. we're answering questions from 405 <laughs> we might have to do a speed round oh <laughs> uh, we might we might okay all right, we got Avalar. Didn't type the message the first time, laughing my ass off. Would Rome Katanas be a good upgrade on my K2 formulas on a ride cycle candy? I'm not aggressive, but I feel like I overpower my setup sometimes. Hashtag Thirsty Thursday 25. Um, yeah, I mean, that's a solid one yeah. in there. Um, you know, because you're going to go to an aux tech strap on the Katana versus the, um, because they, do they, they still do on an older formula. They did the stitch strap, I think. Right. Mm -hmm. if I remember. Yeah. So on, on the, before they did the remodel of everything. Yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I think that that would be, yeah, I think you'd be fine with that. If you're, you know, like you said, you're not an aggressive, you're not aggressive, but you're overpowering the setup. Um, honestly, like if you want a better strap because you're overpowering it, instead of katanas, go with the Astro ASIM because that strap is a little beefier. And that would be the better bet for it, in my opinion. Like, I swap out. So, like, I got a new set of black labels and literally made them look like old black labels from the first gen because I swapped out the heel straps because the Oxtech strap, in my opinion, isn't as beefy as it could be. So, right. yeah. Click those links. All right. Okay, we got Sigimon. How different are the Now Drive Pros versus the Jones Mercury? Can't find a good comparison for sale season. Uh, they're pretty comparable. It's the strap difference that's the big one. And Isn't the, the Pro infused? Is the Pro's not infused with carbon? Is it? No, that's the CX. Okay. So there's the Drive Drive Pro, and then. Uh, Drive CX. The Drive CX would be the Apollo. The Drive Pro is more like the Mercury. And then the Drive is it's kind of oh, like a Mercury, but it's kind of also above like the Surf Series there. Like the well, Meteorite, it's like in between. I was going to say it's a Mercury when you flip the straps to the Surf strap instead of the free ride. Yeah, that would be, that would be very accurate there. So... Mm -hmm. But yeah, I would say the pro is probably going to be a little stiffer than the Mercury. Yeah. But we're splitting hairs. Whatever's a better deal, go with that one. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And we got Byron here. Sup, Legends. Looking at a Yes Basic on Inc. 156 wide versus a Public Dispute 156 for all mountain freestyle. 10 US, 170 pounds for doing all lines in the park, bombing groomers, jib and side hits. Which is the better board? Um, honestly, like I think the basic on ink is better on jumps and I think it's a little more versatile around the mind, uh, around the mountain, but the dispute is better on jibs and it's a little more forgiving. So yeah. kind of, that's, that's my hot take on that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, if you're looking for something more versatile, I would go with the basic on ink because it does have that pow stance on it. So yeah. when you are looking to bomb and like take it in the pile, that sort of thing, that would be a little bit better for you. Also, yeah. being 170 pounds, I think that one will have enough guts for you as well where it's not just going to fold in half or get floppy at high speeds. It, it's going to be more damp, too. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. Let's get this man a spin. But yeah, if you're just going to jib and hit smaller park jumps, I would go to speed then, but... All these slow signs. All right. Francois Seguin, have you ridden the new Excavator 2425 same as this year? I wrote it yeah. today. Yeah. TC it's literally wrote it. Same. <laughs> I think it's the same. Yeah, they haven't changed anything. It's still really fun. Still a great board. Yeah. All right. Following up on our battalion boot banter from MTC Sipkins, do the battalion shoes, their boots, come in women's versions as well? So hard to find a stiff boot for women and men's shoes really... Don't have the right fit. Uh, you got the catalog there? Yeah. 
See if they, I think there is something in there. Yep, they got something. It's called the what's, mosh. What's the flex on it? Doesn't say. Really? Doesn't say on any of the flexes here. Huh. Let's see if they actually, because they have it. There's apparel, there's women's bindings, huh. men's bindings. Yeah, they, oh, there it is. Six. Uh -huh. So that means it's one of the stiffest ones they make. So it should be comparable to the uh, acid boa. Yep. That's what it's looking like. Because it does have an injected hard spine on it. Right there. Yeah. 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 So no, that, yeah, the that sounds too. like it's the women's version of this one, which is stiff. So the salsa. Or it could be the women's version of the salsa, actually. No, the salsa is a four. Because this has a six. Catalog's wrong. The boot says it's a four on it. <laughs> well, somebody's going to figure it out by the time. Yeah, because that's a six. And the acid on here says a seven. But we all know those are arbitrary if you watch any of our videos. So Yes, that's true. So... All right. Well, that answers that. All right. So we got a super yeah. chat here from Jason. Any thoughts on Chinese versus Canadian wired boards? I want to support Devin Walsh, but curious if there's a quality difference. Also, what temp snow works best with John Cena corn DNA? His baby gravy works best in all snow temps. Uh, there is a slight difference between the two of them. I think that the Canadian made ones are a little more damp. They're not as lively, but all the wired, all the Devin Walsh models, I'm pretty sure are made in Vancouver because they make such a limited run. So, which we're supposed to get one. Hey, I, uh, I watched John Cena's new movie the other day. It's fucking hilarious. Oh, Ricky Stanicki is fucking amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking amazing. Yeah, he, so he's a jerk off. Uh, uh, sat. What, what is the title that he was? He he turns pop music into songs about jerking off. Yeah, satire. What was it? Bone masturbation like, satire masturbation or something like satire. that. Satire. It's a nice They're great day songs for too. Off, to jerk a boner off. Yeah. <laughs> like everything is songs. like all. He is so fucking good in that movie. I was dying laughing. Like I love Cena. Because he just does not give a fuck. He's like, I was a professional wrestler. You think I give a fuck? I'll walk out at the Oscars butt-ass naked. Yeah, my girlfriend did not think that movie was as funny as I did. That I was, was amazing. Laughing. I Well, so I like Zac Efron. And I was like, oh, this should be good. Zac Efron, fucking John Cena. And I was like, this is fucking hilarious. It like, might be one of the best, like, buddy comedies in a very Well, long I love time. the fact when they're like, Rod, Rod, Ricky, my name is Ricky, call me Ricky. And then he finally <laughs> shows the ID, Ricky, Bar Richard Barbara Stanicki. And you're like, <laughs> Barbara? And you're like, it's my grandmother's name. Yeah. You know, yeah, or the best is when he goes, he's like, does anyone else see what I'm seeing? He's like, what are you talking about? He's like, and William H. Macy's character, he's an air dicker. He's just dancing yeah. everything. It turns into like, and I was like, oh my God. That That's movie, this the whole time? That movie was fucking hilarious. Like, yeah. If you guys haven't seen it, you should definitely watch it. Definitely that go see Amazon. Ricky's it's fucking Nikki. amazing. It's fucking, it's fucking hilarious. And they're like, I love it. I love when the one guy's like, well, it's good to know if I ever become a raging alcoholic, like I'm still going to be buff. Oh, I'm addicted to steroids, man. Got hooked on him. This is, this is chasing the dragon ever since. Yeah. He's just fucking jacked. He goes, damn, for an alcoholic, you're ripped. He's like, oh, I love steroids. <laughs> yeah. Like, fucking hilarious. Like, yeah. All right, now it's talking movies. Sounds good. Yeah, talk, talking movies, talking movies. This isn't blank. So, all right. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, we already answered that one. Uh, 
I like this one from Melvin Del Rosario. Woohoo, I made it. Uh, why does everyone on social media recommend a Donic board to make real snowboard turns? I bet them kooks can't even carve balls to the slope. I don't know, probably because they get a fucking deal on them. I don't know. Like, those boards are ass. Like, the finish on them is shit. You weren't riding with me one day, but I was riding... It was the day I rode the Retox. I rode up the park, or up the park chair with somebody, and he had a custom Donic with size 7 Insanos and black and gold A10s, but it was a 36 waist width. Yeah. That's bigger than the lumberjack. Yeah. His boots didn't come near the end. He had to have had this much between the toe and the heel. It was nuts. It was I was like, yo, dude, how's that for it? And he goes, you know, he's like, I got it. still trying to get it over on its heel side edge to really dig it in. And he goes, What do you want? And I told him, I was like, Oh, it's a park board, like super small. I was like, this thing lays over on its heel edge, no problem. I can drag my ass on the ground and get back up. And he was like, wait, what? I'm like, yeah, you don't need that shit, dude. He's like, this is custom made for me. I was like, yeah, somebody fucking lied to you. Yeah, somebody like, like, dude, there was a group of three, like, I think they were Chinese, maybe Korean kids. They were like probably like 12, 13, all with custom Donics and clues trying to carve right underneath uh, American Eagle. And they were just kept falling over. And I was like, you know why you're falling over? Because your board fucking sucks and your ability doesn't match it. Like, you're not booting. And like the one kid I heard him, he's like, I'm booting out. And I'm looking at it going, you're not booting out. You're falling over, dude. You're just like, slow. You just go yeah, fast. Like, go faster. Lay a trench harder. Like, today, on the, you saw, I don't know if you saw when I, I laid the, uh, the strand of shorty over on the back foot and just rooped a hard carve. I put my armpit on the ground, like all this touched, and I brought it right back out and was like, oh, okay. Oh, cool. <laughs> I was like, cool. I'm going to go over here and smash some pow now because yeah. that's what I do. All right. You got this board. one from Mason. Just blew out the edge on my K2 Alchemist. It's toast. I love this board. Any reason why I shouldn't just buy another one? Any other boards with similar, similar a lateral stiffness but softer torsion? No, man. You know what you like. Go fucking buy it. Yeah, it's the same reason I always have the same boot. Like, mm -hmm. just go fucking buy it. There's a, there's a reason I have two Mercury's. Like, no. No. Like, there's a reason I've had two Endeavor Archetypes. Yeah. You and know? four pairs of uh, Rome bindings. Yeah. Or five. I don't know what you're at. All right. Let's see. Okay. I like this question from Eric P. How do you review boots if you don't have proper time to break them in? Simple. You talk out your ass and you talk about how it works for your foot. Boot reviews are fucking pointless. The best boot is the one that fits your foot and fits your needs. That is why we are going to do something completely different that no one has ever done. We were actually talking about it with um, our K or our Capita and union rep today about it. He's like, it needs to be fucking done. And I was like, it does. Mm -hmm. And we're going to do it on a level that no one else has. And then we're going to drop it in the fall and everyone's going to be like, fuck, why didn't I think of that? Uh, okay, let's see. Eh. Okay, let's see what we got here. We got Siobhan Tizolo. Or is it Siobhan? With the V, I feel like it's Siobhan. Uh I have a K2 Spellcaster for Park and have been using a 2019 Jones Mind Expander for other days. Want to replace the Mind Expander Rex? Basically, live at Copper, 7.5 boots, 150 pounds. Um, I mean, you should check out the Women's Rome Ravine. Mm -hmm. That's that's like, you're going to get a little more snap out of the tail on that thing, which will be good. Because when you're coming back from Union Meadows and the pump track of death, you're going to be able to take them four at a time instead of being like, blah, 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 and dying. Like poor Lauren today. Yeah. She got fucking murdered in those things. I, I've i never seen them that bad. And I was like, I hit one, gapped like four, pumped into the big one, gapped another four, and then just washboarded all the way to the end. And I was like, I'm going to die. But yeah, I would do the uh, Women's Rome Ravine. 
I think that one's a really solid choice. Maybe a Nidecker thruster because they do make it in smaller sizes, but that might be too mind expandery. I don't know. It's got 3D shaping in the nose, which is really cool. Uh, otherwise, um, maybe if you get a chance, swing into underground or call underground in Breck. Find out if they've got the 47 Karua pencil to try, because I think it's a 47. I think that's what it comes in. It's the smaller one. That might be another good option for you. Yeah. Oh, no. You got anything else, sir? Uh, I would say possibly a Psycho Candy, just because I think that's like a direct competitor of it, where you wouldn't feel too different or anything like that. Probably go with the 150 on the Psycho Candy, I would say. I wouldn't go much bigger than that, um, just because your boot size is only a seven and a half. Um, otherwise, what else we got? Volume shifted out. I mean, do they make an excavator small enough? There's a 43 or 44. There's yeah. And that would probably yeah, be 47 too, as well, isn't there? Excavator in there? Uh, if you want something a little different too, there's also a smaller special uh, K2 special effects. Yeah. Um, so that would be that would be another one. Uh let's see. Um I'm trying to think that I I feel like there's something from Lib and I can't think of it right now. Let me let me look at this real quick. I know one, you're not gonna like it. No, we don't talk do. about that one. Yeah. <laughs> you know which one I'm talking about right there. Yeah, I don't even remember what it's called. I could just pick it out of a lineup, but I can't remember it. Though. But, oh, it's the Free Spirit, I think. Something like that. Let's see. Um, where the fuck is it? God, the LibTech catalog is seriously like 5,000 pages. It's the most yeah. ridiculous thing. I'm like, I just. It's also broken up so weird. It is. It's and, it's terrible, and I love that they do it that way, though. Like, if I'm a buyer, I'm so pissed looking at that catalog. I was um, going to say, like, well, for next year, there's the Theta, which, no? but that's C2X. I don't know if you want to go that route. Um, no, that's probably too big. Um, oh, with Arbor, um, what is it? It's the the. It's not the Vita. It's uh, the fuck is it? There's one from Arbor, but uh, I was gonna say maybe like the Yes Hell Yes, Helen Shatini's board. Yeah. That might be. Yeah, that one's good. gonna be definitely more standard board, so it's gonna be different than your Mind Expander. But or I mean, yeah. you could even do like a Yes Four Twenty. Well, no, then that would. Well, you're on a spellcaster. You know, like honestly, you might actually like the K Two Cold Shoulder if you're on a spellcaster. Yeah, that that's good be. directional. Um, I'm trying to think. I feel like I'm brain farting something, and I know that there's something good out there, and I'm just like, it's it's lost on me. I don't know. You could, you know, it would be cool. Get the 48 Battalion Surfer. Yeah. That board... That board fucks at copper. Like if you're riding lower enchanted and shit, and then if you take it up in the bowl, you got that swallow tail to play with, you know? So yeah, I don't know. You got a bunch of options. Uh, Short ride. Yeah. Okay. Let's see what we got here. All right. We got uh, Ben Samara. I just bought a Battalion Goliath Plus and Battalion ASIM full wrap bindings after watching your reviews. No questions, just thanks for the content. Thanks for buying them, dude. Stoked. That's a solid setup. Oh, join Angry Snowboarder VIP. And we got our boy Ruff. RIP, my first day off work, Powder Dreams. Jenny mm. gave Forrest and her kid AIDS. <laughs> Jenny. I thought that we caught that part. Jenny. Jenny. Why's my immune system broken? Why am I always sick? <laughs> I mean, they don't want to admit that she died of AIDS, but she totally died of AIDS. Yeah. 
I don't know. Me and my friends were <laughs> bored the other day, and we were coming out with or coming up with uh, Forrest Gump sequel ideas. Yeah. Oh. Can you imagine Forrest in the background of the like of uh, that Donald Trump insurrection thing? You know how funny that shit would be. How about how about him like walking behind like the police protests? Yeah. <laughs> just... I'm just trying to get to work. And all these people decided to walk. <laughs> yeah, we we had quite a few good ones that were like, oh my god. Okay. We'll take this one from JA Physio. Did you already check out the new Razi Slashimi and After Hours for Guys? I have, I've ridden it. I think it needs a little more carbon in the tail. Just a little bit more would give it more snap. Shape is awesome. That thing floats well. Super, super fun. Oh, we're almost caught up. It's amazing. <laughs> All right, we got Mulder. Uh, rode the 2025 Aeronaut in 58 wide today. Edge hold was so much better compared to last season's 59. Any idea why besides being a little stiffer in the wide? I mean, you got more surface area underfoot. It's wide. Yeah. I mean, there's that. That's... I mean, I don't know. Did they do something fucked up to your edge before you demoed it? TC, TC rode the new Aeronaut right into a tree. <laughs> yep. It still looks brand new. There's nothing wrong with that board. The tree is fucked. Yeah. So. Oh, too funny. Too too funny. That board. That board slays though. Like I love that board. Oh, ouch! You lose. Ugh. All right. Well, I think we finally caught up on questions, so uh, we're gonna get out of here because I need to eat some fucking food. I'm dying. I'm, yeah, living yeah, on, I I'm living on a banana, a half a canister of Pringles, and a half a pack of EL Fudge Double Stuff Cookies because I'm an adult. <laughs> I eat like a goddamn small child still. But if you did win yeah. stickers from us, make sure you email info at Angry Snowboarder so we can get them to you. We're going to do that. Uh, let's see. Check out yesterday's top five. TC had some great tips on how to how to ride a bank slalom. So that was good. Hopefully you guys enjoyed us talking about these battalion boots. We will have something big coming in the fall. We're working on it right now. we got to get through a bunch of other stuff. Um, the big thing is if everything goes the way we want, one to three long format videos a day for probably 200 plus days. And we'll get to a point where you will just be having content. Like you can just expect content every day from us uh we do if ben can finish it up we got a fun video involving a skill saw and snowboard boots coming out on monday yep. hopefully hopefully um we'll see if not monday it'll be coming out in the near it's gonna be a long video that could we filmed it's gonna be a long three different cameras it was ridiculous so um yeah that that that'll be a good one but thanks you guys for tuning in and hopefully if you're trapped in denver you're gonna be able to get up and get some pow this weekend so don't let the powder panic. Yeah, just cause go find a hill and just ride that. Yeah. Just go, go hike a hill. That's what I would do if I still lived down there. Like, We're going to go power surfing or something. Oh, fuck <laughs> it. Go go out to Red Rocks and ride ride down the stairs. No? Like, you guys I, dude, if that. there's three feet, it's a pillow line. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. I mean, like, shit, right. go ride the hill in Boulder, I guess. I don't know. I'm like, fuck. And there's also that, like, no. that hoedown ski hill or whatever with the rope toe. Go get some rope toe pow laps. <laughs> That's that one out in Windsor, wherever it is. So, yeah, the new one. Ugh. Who knows if that's even open? But yeah. All right. Thanks, All right, guys. guys. We'll talk to you later. So, thank you for everything.